Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to answer a subscriber's question. So this is in response to another video I made. If you watch to the end of this video, I will have at the end of it, uh, the little video clip that you can click to see the original video where I made this statement. But I made the statement that I left New York City with one job and made the same salary with the same firm and moved to Dallas where I could basically live for half the cost. So I made that statement. Uh, I think this is an excellent question here. So Hamish, apologize if I mispronounce your name here, uh, asked the question, do you think that quant salaries will continue to stay the same regardless of location? Many banks pay more to employees who live in expensive cities to offset the premium of higher living costs associated with New York City, LA, London, etc. Uh, Morgan Stanley recently came out last year requesting everyone return to the office. And I recall a quote from a senior manager said something along the lines of, we don't pay you New York salaries to live in Colorado. Do you think that for quants who are more senior and experienced, they can bargain the same wage from an expensive state whilst living in a cheaper one, whereas an analyst, say, doesn't have that leverage with the bank? Okay, so I'm going to unpack this a little bit here. Uh, first off, no, not even today. I don't think that every bank, I don't even think the majority of banks will pay you the same salary to live in, say, like New York versus Dallas, Denver, I don't know, some other city, Tallahassee, something like that. There's an important point here, though, made towards the end, which is seniority is going to play some kind of piece to this. So if you're more senior, but more realistically, it's not necessarily just seniority, it's value to the firm. If you have a massive value to the firm and the firm can't live without you, they're going to do things to kind of make things happen here. So I've seen, I've been on teams uh, where they had managing directors, I'm trying to think how many off the top of my head, uh, but there was at least... I think two of them, maybe three of them that lived in states and in cities where there were either no offices or there was like a call center. Like it had nothing to do with the business we were working in and they were allowed to work in just random locations in the U.S. because their seniority, because their networking capabilities, because their value to the firm. Again, if you know somebody, you can pull little strings. And again, seniority does help. It's hard to argue and say, I've got this fresh analyst coming, you know, right out of college or grad school here, and they're going to be amazing and wonderful, but they don't want to, you know, work, you know, where we're at. So yes, those are excellent points. Now, do I think quant salaries will continue to stay the same across locations regardless? No, but I think we are trending in that direction, but not for banks. So to touch on the Morgan Stanley comment, Morgan Stanley did not ask people to go to the office, to return to the office. Uh, Morgan Stanley threatened employees, basically, that if you do not return to office, you will face the consequences, essentially. And they didn't state it, but basically they're going to fire people that don't return. Um, I slapped them on the wrist. I slapped a bunch of these big banks on the wrist for the just this nonsensical, unethical treatment of employees. Yes, people hate going to the office. It is vastly expensive. Now, I will put another point on this as well, though. Um, living in New York, even those premiums they give you is never enough to cover the full cost. So let's just throw a number out there and say I make $100,000 in Dallas. If I move to New York for the same location, the companies like JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, all I'm going to say, you know what? It costs double. I'm going to pay you, I don't know, 200000 to make sure that you can really live at the same standards. And realistically, if you wanted to really live at the same standards, because I mean, my cost being half in Dallas versus New York now, uh, in Dallas, I'm in a full-size, full-blown house. Whereas if I had that in New York City, it'd probably be three times, four times the cost of living to live in New York City. So no, these companies are never, ever, ever going to pay you an honest, fair wage to live in a big city. That's kind of part of the draw though. So let's say you, I don't know, let's say that they pay half that increase to live in New York City to help cover it, but you're still missing 50%. That 50% you're missing has to be because you love living in New York City or you love living in LA or London or wherever you're at. So those are things to consider on that. Now, going back to this, I think it comes down to the value piece. So we're going to touch this quickly here. Most banks don't value quants. We're disposable assets for banks, unfortunately, and they're not really treating employees as this really like driving force. And so, right, you think about like trading desks, for example, right? Traders get paid significantly well, at least historically back in the past when you had traders that were just doing, you know, magical trades and making a bunch of money. And since you're driving that profit for the business, they paid you a lot. 
Now, banks typically have this view that senior management and those with business degrees, those not in the quant realm, are typically the ones driving the strategic decision making. And so therefore, they deserve to make more money. They will have more leverage to make money in different locations. Um, but from the quant side here, if you do anything related to like CCAR stress testing, most of these banks think it's a massive joke and don't really care. But I will note the bigger the bank, the better you're going to be treated as a quant, when typically the smaller the bank, the less reliable, the less, I guess, dependable, <laughs> the less they actually use models, understand models, and the less the models drive the business. And the less that the models drive the business, the less that they kind of respect quants, the less they pay quants. So realistically, and if you want to stay on the banking side, and the banking side has been an amazing career opportunity for me. I have learned a ton. I've been really fortunate to find excellent teams to work for, excellent managers. Uh, and when things don't go well or the teams kind of shift in a different direction that I don't like, I jump and find another better team to work on. So again, the, these pieces here, being in the banking side, the bigger the bank, you're typically treated more because big banks are dependable, dependent on models here. So they're going to pay you a little bit more they're going to treat you a little bit better. Um, smaller banks, though, are not. So these are things to consider. FinTech now has been the booming side, which I've kind of been you know dipping my toe in a little bit, looking around. Um, I've now had three FinTech firms reach out, wanting to chat, look at opportunities. There seems to be a lot more demand on the FinTech side there seems to be a lot more understanding, like they need models to drive their businesses. So they're gonna you know, treat you a little bit better. Uh, remote working has been an opportunity for most of these firms because they want top talent and they're competing with the tech side. And also to kind of top this off here with tech, I saw that Facebook or Meta now is going to be doing full-time remote. I saw they're gonna pay less for that. So again, it's like, they're gonna be some compensation, some gives and takes. You'll definitely save money though, uh, working remote typically. And I'll notice as, note as well here that uh, somebody posted here, so this guy named Andrew, who's a recruiter at Airbnb, you know, they commented here that, you know, Airbnb just announced one of the most flexible work policies in the world, work from any office or your home, live anywhere in the country and get paid the same no matter where you live. You can even live abroad for 90 days at a time in a country, then hop from country to country. And then they notice that they're hiring and they have this awesome kind of plan here where... They're not pigeonholing you into working in big Silicon Valley or New York City, for example. So tech, fintech, I think that's where a lot of this is going to be going here. Banks, I think, are going to have to wake up a little bit as we start driving more and more technology. They're going to have to realize that we're going to need remote working. We're going to need decent salaries to do this. If not, you're going to lose talent to their firms. Now, the majority of the banking industry, no, I don't think they're going to pay you the same no matter where you go. Um, but in that video, which is linked right here in a second, I... Uh, I made that statement because that's how my deal turned out. And typically, if you have good value, you can kind of leverage your positions. Uh, you can kind of keep that salary. So that's my take. Those are my perspectives on salary city to city and working remote. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.